Welcome to my channel, where there is no mercy or comfort. If you love fear, you're in the wrong place and risking your life because what I present is aimed only at dear hearts. What I'm about to tell you is not innocent things, but sick things. I will talk about the terrifying and frightening things I have found in the world, or within myself, or in this video. But before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to receive notifications of more scary videos. And if you dare, leave a comment below the video and tell me your opinion. But be careful, you may regret it. Now, without further delay, let's delve into the world of horror, but don't expect to come out unscathed. Scary Story In the heart of Yunnan's verdant jungles, where nature's untamed beauty collides with the hum of small-town life, lies a quaint restaurant that harbors secrets darker than its savory dishes. Run by the ingenious Marak, this haven for wayfarers is about to become the stage for a series of spine-chilling events that will shake the very foundations of this close-knit community. But what is the truth behind the polyodontine fish, the red pandas, and the New Year's Eve feast? And what is the fate of the world when the clock strikes midnight? The sun was setting over the lush green hills of Yonan, casting a warm glow over the town of Aksishwangbana. The town was bustling with activity as people prepared for the New Year's Eve celebration. Lanterns, banners, and fireworks adorned the streets, creating a festive atmosphere. The smell of delicious food wafted from the stalls and shops, enticing the hungry customers. Among the many eateries in the town, one stood out for its reputation and popularity. It was a cozy restaurant, nestled in a wooden cabin, surrounded by bamboo trees and flowers. The sign above the door read Mehraks, and it featured a smiling red panda holding a plate of noodles. The restaurant was owned and run by Mehrak, a young man of Iranian descent who had moved to Yunnan a few years ago. He was a master chef who could whip up any dish with his exotic spices and herbs. He was also a friendly and charming host, who welcomed everyone with a smile and a joke. Meharak's restaurant was especially famous for its fish dishes, which were made with fresh and rare ingredients. Meharak had a knack for finding and catching the most elusive and delicious fish in the region, such as the golden carp, the silver trout, and the jade perch. But his most prized catch was the polyodontine fish, a strange and mysterious creature that lived in the deepest and darkest parts of the jungle rivers. The polyodontine fish was a large and scaly fish with a long and slender body and a mouth full of sharp teeth. It had two pairs of fins, one on its back and one on its belly that resembled wings. The fish was said to have magical properties and to grant wishes to those who ate it. But it was also said to be cursed and to bring misfortune and death to those who caught it. Mehrak was one of the few people who knew how to catch and cook the polyodontine fish, and he did so with great care and skill. He only served it on special occasions, and only to his most loyal and trusted customers. He charged a hefty price for it, but those who tasted it swore that it was worth every penny. The fish had a rich and succulent flavor, unlike any other fish. It also had a strange and intoxicating effect, 
making the eater feel euphoric and powerful. One of Mehrak's regular customers was Mr. Li, a wealthy and influential businessman from Shanghai. He had come to Exishuang Bana for a vacation and had fallen in love with Mehrak's restaurant. He had tried all of Mehrak's dishes, but his favorite was the polyodontine fish. He had eaten it several times, and each time he felt a surge of energy and confidence. He believed that the fish was the secret to his success and happiness, and he wanted to have it one more time before he returned to Shanghai. Mr. Li had booked the entire restaurant for the New Year's Eve feast, and had invited his friends and associates to join him. He had also requested Mehrak to prepare the polyodontine fish for him and his guests, and had paid him a handsome sum in advance. Mehrak had agreed, and had gone to the jungle to catch the fish. He had returned with a large and beautiful specimen, which he kept in a tank in his kitchen. He planned to cook it at the last minute, to preserve its freshness and flavor. The night of the feast arrived, and the restaurant was filled with Mr. Lee's guests. They were all dressed in their finest clothes, and they chatted and laughed with each other. They enjoyed the appetizers and drinks that Mehrak had prepared for them, and they praised his hospitality and skill. Mehrak was in a good mood, and he mingled with the guests, making jokes and compliments. He also kept an eye on the kitchen, where his assistant, a young girl named Mi, was busy with the final preparations. Mei was Mehrak's only employee and his trusted friend. She had been working for him since he opened the restaurant, and she had learned a lot from him. She was a smart and diligent girl who loved cooking and animals. She had a special bond with the red pandas, the cute and furry creatures that lived in the jungle and often visited the restaurant. Mehrak had adopted two of them and had named them Rumi and Hafez after his favorite poets. He had taught them some tricks and they often entertained the guests with their antics. Mi adored them and treated them like her pets. She also had a crush on Mehrak, but she kept it to herself as she knew he was older and more experienced than her. Miai was in charge of cooking the polyodontine fish as Mehrak had taught her how to do it. She had to follow a precise and complex recipe which involved marinating, steaming, frying, and baking the fish and adding various spices and sauces. She had to be careful not to overcook or undercook the fish, as that would ruin its taste and effect. She also had to be careful not to touch the fish with her bare hands, as that would cause a rash and a fever. She wore gloves and a mask, and used a pair of tongs to handle the fish. She was almost done with the cooking, and she checked the oven to see if the fish was ready. She opened the oven door and was greeted by a blast of hot air and a delicious aroma. She looked at the fish and saw that it was golden and crispy and that its fins were spread out like wings. She smiled and felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. She had done a good job and she hoped that Mehrak and the guests would appreciate it. She took the fish out of the oven and placed it on a large and ornate platter. She garnished it with some herbs and lemon slices, and added a final touch of sauce. She admired her work, and felt a pang of curiosity. She wondered what the fish tasted like, and what effect it had. She was tempted to take a bite, but she resisted. She knew that the fish was not for her, and that she had to deliver it to the dining room. She put on her apron and lifted the platter with both hands. She walked out of the kitchen and headed towards the dining room. She was greeted by a round of applause and cheers as the guests saw her and the fish. They clapped and whistled 
and praised her beauty and skill. They made way for her, and she walked towards the head of the table where Mr. Lee was sitting. He smiled and nodded at her and gestured for her to put the platter in front of him. She did so and bowed slightly. She looked at Mehrak, who was standing next to Mr. Lai. He winked and gave her a thumbs up and she blushed and smiled. Mr. Lee thanked her and asked her to stay and watch him cut the fish. He said that it was a tradition and that it would bring good luck to both of them. He took a large and sharp knife and sliced the fish in half. He then cut a piece from the tail and offered it to me. He said that it was the best part and that she deserved it. He insisted that she take it and that she eat it with him. He said that it was a sign of respect and gratitude and that he would be offended if she refused. He said that it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and that she would never regret it. Me hesitated and looked at Mehrak. He nodded and smiled and encouraged her to accept the offer. He said that it was a rare honor and that she should not miss it. He said that he was proud of her and that he wanted to share the moment with her. He said that he would eat the fish with her and that they would celebrate together. He said that it was a special night and that they should make the most of it. Mei felt flattered and touched and she decided to take the offer. She thought that it was a harmless gesture and that it would not hurt to try the fish. She thought that it might even be fun and that it would make Mayhark happy. She took the piece of fish from Mr. Lee and thanked him. She put it in her mouth and bit into it. She was surprised by the taste, which was sweet and spicy, and by the texture, which was soft and tender. She swallowed it and felt a warm and pleasant sensation in her stomach. She smiled and felt a rush of joy and excitement. She looked at Mr. Lai, who had also eaten his piece of fish. He smiled back at her and raised his glass. He said that it was delicious and that he felt great. He toasted to her and to the new year. He said that it was going to be the feast continued and the guests helped themselves to the polyodontine fish. They ate it with gusto and praised its taste and effect. They felt a surge of happiness and energy, and they laughed and talked with each other. They drank more wine and toasted to their health and wealth. They complimented Mehrak and me and thanked them for their service. They said that it was the best meal they ever had and that they would never forget it. Mehak and me also ate the fish and felt its influence. They felt a bond of friendship and affection, and they smiled and hugged each other. They joined the guests in their merriment and shared their stories and jokes. They said that they were happy and grateful and that they loved their work and their life. They said that they were lucky and blessed and that they had nothing to fear. But as the night went on, the mood of the feast changed. The fish's effect wore off and was replaced by a different and darker one. The guests started to feel sick and dizzy and their faces turned pale and sweaty. They felt a sharp pain in their stomachs and a burning sensation in their throats. They coughed and gagged and spat out blood and bile. They clutched their chests and gasped for air. They screamed and moaned and begged for help. Mehak and me also felt the fish's curse and suffered the same symptoms. They felt a wave of nausea and agony and their vision blurred and dimmed. They collapsed on the floor and writhed in pain. They looked at each other and saw the horror and regret in their eyes. They realized that they had made a terrible mistake and that they had doomed themselves 
and the guests. They apologized and cried and held each other's hands. The restaurant was filled with chaos and carnage as the feast turned into a massacre. The guests died one by one, their bodies twisted and contorted. The fish's poison spread through their veins and corrupted their flesh and bones. The fish's fins pierced through their skin and sprouted from their backs and bellies. The fish's teeth grew from their mouths and tore their lips and tongues. The fish's eyes opened on their foreheads and glowed with a malevolent light. The red pandas, who had been hiding in the kitchen, sensed the fish's power and felt a call from the jungle. They emerged from their hiding place and saw the scene of horror. They were not afraid or disgusted, but rather fascinated and curious. They felt a connection with the fish and a loyalty to Marak. They decided to follow them and to join their fate. They ran to the dining room and jumped on the table. They grabbed the fish's head and bit into it. They ate it with relish and felt a surge of strength and intelligence. They felt a change in their bodies and minds and a new and sinister purpose. They looked at Mehrak and me, who were still alive, but barely. They smiled and nodded at them and thanked them for their gift. They said that they would honor them and that they would fulfill their destiny. They took the fish's body and dragged it to the door. They opened the door and ran out of the restaurant. They headed towards the jungle, leaving behind a trail of blood and feathers. They ran with speed and grace and dodged the obstacles and dangers. They reached the river and jumped into it. They swam with ease and skill and followed the current. They reached the waterfall and climbed it. They reached a cave and entered it. The cave was the fish's lair and the source of its magic. It was a dark and damp place filled with bones and scales. It was also a portal to another world, a world of darkness and chaos. The fish had come from that world and had brought a piece of it with it. The fish had waited for the right time and the right people to open the portal and to unleash its world upon this one. The red pandas reached the end of the cave and saw the portal. It was a large and circular opening surrounded by glowing runes and symbols. It was a black and swirling vortex that emitted a low and ominous hum. The red pandas felt a pull from the portal and a voice in their heads. It was the fish's voice and it spoke to them. It said that they were its chosen ones and that they had done well. It said that they were its children and that they had inherited its power. It said that they were its heralds and that they had to complete its mission. It said that they had to open the portal and to bring forth its world. It said that they had to destroy this world and to create a new one. The red pandas obeyed the fish's voice and did as it commanded. They placed the fish's body in front of the portal and arranged its fins in a certain way. They chanted the fish's words and activated the portal. They watched as the portal opened and as the darkness poured out. They felt a surge of joy and pride and a sense of accomplishment. They said that they had done it and that they had changed the world. They said that they were the masters and that they would rule the world. The portal opened and the darkness spread. It engulfed the cave and the jungle. It reached the town and the restaurant. It consumed the bodies and the souls. It erased the memories 
and the history. It created a new reality and a new order. It brought forth a new world and a new dawn. The New Year's Eve fireworks lit up the sky and the people cheered and celebrated. They did not know what had happened and what had changed. They did not know that they were living in a nightmare and that they were doomed. They did not know that they were slaves and that they were prey. They did not know that they were ruled by the red pandas and that they were under the fish's eye. Thank you for joining us for this spine-tingling story. We hope you found it both thrilling and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed this video, please consider participating in our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing it with your friends. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more engaging content for you. Goodbye, and may you always tread carefully in the world of the unknown.